Welcome to the fifth lesson about form validation. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use to validate the passwords. For example, when I'm typing the password and it does not meet the required condition, the confirm password is disabled and it makes sense. Why should you be able to type the confirm password if the password itself does not meet the condition? So you see right now you cannot type in here. But when you type in a password that meets the condition, now this one is no longer disabled and you can type in. So that's what we're going to do now. So we'll go back to our code where we left off last time. We're going to add an event listener to the password, the event of key up. Then we're going to add our anonymous function there. Then the last argument is going to be the use capture. It's going to be false. Now remember, this event we are still running it in the event of the window having loaded okay so we're just adding it there i'm going to type in our code here and we're going to pass in the event as an argument so the first thing we're going to create our variables remember these variables are local variables so we're going to create the variable called password we're going to make it to be the event dot target dot value now if you don't understand where this comes from you can go back to the other lessons and i had explained it okay there i explained why the next thing we're going to create a variable for the response box like this one and this is a span element that lies next to the password field okay so when you go back to our HTML this is a span element that you're targeting and it's the same span element that gives us this output okay that's why I'm calling it the response box so we're going to create it there after creating those two variables we are only going to use if condition to check whether the length of the password is greater than 6, like this. Password.length, if it's less than 6, we want the response box, this one, .ino HTML to be, must be at least 6 characters long. Okay. Then we want the color to be red. Response box .style .color equals red the next thing we want to make it that so long as there is an error here the user cannot type in the confirm password like this so there's an error you see now both of them can type but when you start typing and there's an error there this field becomes disabled you see you cannot click in it you cannot type in it so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to target the confirm password dot set attribute. This is a method that takes into arguments the attribute you want to add and the value you want to add to that attribute. In this case, the value is going to be disabled. So it's going to add that attribute to make it disabled. If it's greater than six, we're going to the else part and it's going to be the exact opposite of everything here so we're just going to copy it paste it there so this is going to be check like that and the color is going to be green the next thing instead of setting that attribute we're going to remove remove the attribute this one only takes in one argument and that's it disabled so it's going to remove that disabled attribute so let's go back to the browser and check a fresh so when i tap start typing in the password you see it gives back an error also you cannot type in here it's disabled but when it meets the requirement now you can type that's what we are checking for next thing we're going to have the functionality for this one whereby when you start typing it will tell you that they do not match okay so we're going to add that functionality right now 
so we go back to our code now it will be almost exact as this so we are going to copy paste this one copy and paste there but now this one will be the confirm password that's what we'll be adding the event listener to and if the password dot length we're going to change this one now we're going to say if the password this one which we assigned there is not equals to the password now that this element is not equal to the password dot value that means this password the confirm password does not match the password we are going to say does not does not match password it will be red and we're going to remove this line it's not going to be used there and also this line so let's save it and preview so we are back to the browser so let's type in the password okay it meets the requirements so when you start typing here it says does not match password but when it matches it becomes a check mark that's it for now that's how we do that see you in the next lesson we are going to learn about how to add functionality to the grid terms when you check this one the submit button appears okay